Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today. So in this lecture, I would like to deal about a new topic today. Of, that is the continuation of antenatal uh, hemorrhage, antepartum hemorrhage. So in that, I would like to discuss about uh, placental abruption. So what is meant by placental abruption? Placental abruption is pre premature separation of normally attached placenta. So if this is the uterus, uh, what is the placental abruption to tell us? The placental abruption is the placenta is in normal position, no? but the placenta it is separated prematurely. That is even before the pregnancy, even if normally placental separation occurs in the second stage of pregnancy, right? But even before the second stage, if there is premature separation of placenta occurs, then that is called as placental abruption. Now, what is the uh, what have what is the pathogenesis of placental abruption? There is a interface that is we have uh, a placenta. This is the placenta, and this is the maternal membrane that is decidua. Okay. Here in the placenta and decidia, maternal uh, decidia, we have maternal vessels. Okay, there is a vessel interface between it. Okay, so whenever there is bleeding at this stage, whenever there is hematoma formation at this placental and duodenal interface. Okay, so this abruption, this uh, this will this uh, hematoma which is formed. So because of this hematoma, the blood will seep out and it will escape out. So here, if you see, here there is formation of hematoma. Because of this hematoma, the blood will seep out of the uterus and it will come out of the cervix and then vagina. Okay. If this occurs, then this is called has a type of placental obstruction, which is called has revealed obstruction. Sometimes what happens is, if you see, this is the uterus. Okay, this so one. Sorry, this is like this. Okay, now this is the uterus. Sometimes this is the there is separation of placenta from the decidia, but this separation occurs in the central part. Okay, so because of the separation, because here if you see the separation, it occurs in the central part of placenta. Uh, placenta. So this is the thing. Okay, let me tell you. So, because it occurs in the central part of placenta, there is formation of hematoma only in the central part of placenta. In this in this stage, the placenta will the the bleeding which is there here, it is not seeping out. Why? Because already the placenta is attached on both the ends like this. Here, even here it is attached. Even here it is attached. So, the blood which is formed, the hematoma which is formed here, this hematoma, it is not it doesn't have place to come out. So, as a result, this hematoma forms. Um, there is formation of hematoma. This will increase and increase and increase and that results in placental abruption. So this type of placental abruption is called has concealed placental abruption. Why? Because the blood which is there, it is not seeping out. It is just concealed over there. Now, why is there concealed placental abruption? This is because there is separation of placenta, but that has occurred in the middle, in the central place and the margin which is there. So the margins are attached. That is one of the reason for concealed abruption. And one more concealed abruption reason is placental membranes which are there. They are remained attached. Okay. So these are the different reasons for placent concealed abruption. Sometimes there is also one more type which is called has mixed abruption. If this uh, revealed plus concealed, if both are present, then it is called has mixed abruption. What is mixed, ab mixed abruption? Presence of both revealed and also concealed abruption if both are present then we call it has mixed abruption okay now in abruption if you see the blood which is lost is from the maternal blood so here there is maternal blood loss not the fetal blood loss here you see maternal blood loss okay that is one thing which is really important and then what are you going to see what happens now? What is the consequences of this placental abruption? Let me tell you that. Now there is placental abruption, right? Uh, okay, okay, before going into the consequences, let us learn about the risk factors first and then we'll go to the consequences. Okay, first risk factors of placental abruption. 
So in the risk factors of placental abruption, just give me a second, I'll just draw a diagram. What are the risk factors of placental abruption? One, uh, the main process, if you see in the previous, just in the previous slide, I have said that the main problem is there is disruption between the placental uh, placenta and the maternal decidia. Okay, there is a uh, separation of placenta from the maternal decidia. So, if there is inadequate decidialization, for example, if there is inadequate decidialization can occur. The reasons may be anything, but this decidialization is not proper. In such case, the decidia is not proper because the decidia is not proper because uh, the decidia which should be normal that is not proper has a result there can be a placental abruption placenta can separate now what are the causes of this inadequate decidialization one it can be maternal age if the mother is a little old age maternal age she is elderly priming in such cases there can be inadequate decidialization sometimes whenever she is multi para increased parity even in such cases, there is damaged endometrium as a result, there is uh, uh, inadequate decidialization. Okay. And one more cause of inadequate decidialization is there can be maternal fibroids. Okay. Presence of fibroids or uterine anomalies. Those are also the causes of inadequate decidialization. Fibroids. Okay or sometimes even any uterine anomaly, septate uterus or anything. Even in such cases, there is inadequate decidialization which can lead to placenta abruption. Okay, now this is one cause, maternal cause. The next cause is in the placenta, right? As I have said one, I have said about the decidial causes. Next cause should be from placenta. So the second causes are, so these are decidial causes, causes of your now the causes of placenta itself so now placental causes so if the placent placental causes are mainly placental hypoperfusion the main placental causes are placental hypoperfusion there is decreased perfusion of placenta to the placenta okay so why is there a placental hypoperfusion it can be due to vasospasm sometimes vasospasm of placental vessels that can cause Placental hypoperfusion. In vasospasm, the blood vessel it constricts and has a result that there will be placental hypoperfusion. One more, it can be due to hypertension, leading to preeclampsia or eclampsia, anything. Then sometimes it can be due to thrombophilias. If the mother has any type of thrombophilia, uh, it can be acquired thrombophilia, ITP, immune thrombocytopenic perfusion, any type of thrombophilia. Even then, there can be perfuse hypoperfusion and sometimes if the mother uses uh, smo smoking if the mother smokes or she uses tobacco or cocaine use all these causes vasospasm vasoconstriction leading to placental hypoperfusion okay now uh, these are the different uh, main two important things one is inadequate decidialization the second one is Placental causes. Third, uh, whenever there is some abdominal trauma. In the third, there is some trauma to the abdomen. Whenever there is trauma to the abdomen, any tra trauma. Okay. Whenever there is trauma to the abdomen, even then there is a chance of this placenta. Uh, th there is a chance of separation of this uh, uh, placenta from the decidia abdominal trauma so now next uh, whenever there is rapid decompression of the uterus suddenly the comp the uterus which is there that will decompress okay the, that is the last and final cause which is rapid decompression of the uterus whenever there is rapid decompression of uterus okay if there is rapid decompression of uterus why is there a rapid decompression of uterus it can be due to polyhydromnios or it can be due to multifetal gestation
or it can be due to premature rupture of membranes in such cases rapidly the pressure in the uterus decreases and as a result that can lead to placental abruption so these are the different causes of placental abruption okay thank you guys for watching my lecture in my next class i will explain about the clinical features diagnosis and treatment of placental abruption thank you for watching my lecture thank you